Here is the ECAT SK. The most important thing we will tell you today is this. The ECAT SK is available now for industrial applications. If your business requires safe, reliable, competitively priced heat, we encourage you to contact us. We will tell you how to contact us later in this presentation. Andrea Rossi will now show us the ECAT SK. Good day. Good day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the cat, first of all. I apologize for my voice that it disappeared as some issues. Uh, but uh, I will do my best. This is a module of uh, uh, 22 kilowatt uh, of power and uh, is, its uh, dimensions are 40 centimeters of length, 45 centimeters of depth and 93 centimeters of height. And uh, um, what you uh, see is the external box inside which there is all the stuff that you will see in the proceeding of this uh, uh, presentation. And uh, you will see uh, later a video of uh, any card that is uh, working in a factory. What you can see here is uh, 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 this blue box is the case that contains everything. And this is the remote control uh, um, item that is on board of uh, the uh, ECAT because uh, when we install the plants to sell the heat to our clients, we control the plants from remote, from our headquarters. And so this uh, uh, instrument is connected with the hub, that is this one, and the hub is connected through an Ethernet cable uh, um, uh, with the free door, free at the door of a router. And, uh, and through this system, we can uh, command and regulate the uh, operation of uh, our uh, plants. A plant uh, is made of many of these modules. For example, uh, putting uh, ten of them, one beside the other, uh, we will have, uh, in four meters, we will have a 200 uh, kilowatts of rating uh, with the same depth and height of the box. In uh, this uh, um, in this uh, dome that we uh, dome that we see here, we have the inlet and outlet of the fluid that goes to be heated, and these columns that you see here are the uh, neutron bubbles. They serve to detect that there are no neutron emitted by the ecat, and this instrument that you see here is the counter of uh, microsieverts per hour to control and detect that uh, there, are, there is no emission of uh, ionizing radiations so that the uh, running of the ECAT is perfectly safe. And uh, I think that uh, for what concerns the description of uh, the module, uh, uh, I am um, have finished now. Here is this is the 
internet cable that will be connected with uh, the router and uh, and then uh, the, we have the cable to plug the e-cap to the grid and uh, that will be all and uh, uh, at this point uh, uh, with uh, a much better voice uh, my friend Thomas Floek will explain to you the video that we are going to see. Again, this is the video that has been taken putting a camera uh, inside the e-cat so that you will see uh, uh, how the e-cat works and uh, at the end I will uh, show uh, the calculations of the power. Of course, uh, this is not a scientific presentation, this is a commercial presentation all the calculations that you will hear are calculations that have been made by the house, by our service. And um, we uh, guarantee to our clients that uh, the ratings and the efficiency of the ECAT is exactly what I am saying now, and I take any liability for this. And uh, thank you so far, and now I pass luckily the word to my friend uh, Thomas Florek. Let's take a look at the inside. Here is a video of the ECAT SK operating in a factory. Let's begin with a description of what you see on the screen. The screen is set up into a set of seven views of an operating ECAT SK. View number one is the box in the upper left corner. This is the oscilloscope's video from which we can see that the voltage of electric energy that enters the ECAT SK covers five squares. We can read in the top left that the value of the psi of every square is 50, five, zero millivolts. This means that one square is worth 50 millivolts. As you can see, the graphic of the oscilloscope covers five squares. Therefore, 50 times 5 makes a voltage of 250, 250 millivolts. Therefore, the voltage of current that goes to the ECAT is 250 millivolts. Here you can see the ohm meter, which indicates the value in ohms of the resistor put along the cable that connects the control panel with the ECAP. There are 78.1 ohms. View number two is the upper middle area of the screen. This is the control panel. You can see in the front the radiator that recovers the energy used to cool the circuit, making warm air for heating the room. The display where you read 20 is an amperometer and voltmeter. The number you read currently by default indicates the amperes of the current that goes to the control panel, which is 20. You can see in the view of the controller that the operator is displaying the voltage that is going into the ECAP. As you can see, we can read 19 volts. 
before we have read 20 amps. From the well-known Ohm's equation, we know that watts equals volts times amps. Therefore, we have 19 volts times 20 amps. That makes 380 watts. Therefore, we are consuming 380 watt hours per hour. This energy goes almost entirely to the cooling system, and the heat dissipated by the control system is recovered and irradiated to heat the room through the radiator that you see under the logo with the cap. The American flag indicates that the ECAT is made in the USA. This control panel is extremely reliable and robust and realized by means of an industrialized system. It is designed to be controlled from a remote location. Leonardo Corporation supplies assemblies of these modules to be installed in industrial settings, and they are controlled from the headquarters of Leonardo Corporation. The clients pay only for the thermal energy that is supplied from the ECATs. View number three is in the upper right corner of the screen. Here are shown the bubble columns to detect the emission of neutrons. No emission of neutrons has been detected beyond the background. Should neutrons be emitted, then you would see big bubbles. As you can see, no bubbles appear. View number four is the lower left corner. Here is the video of the spectrometer. Along the X Cartesian axis, you can read the wavelength in nanometers. Along the Y axis, you can read the counts. The height of the peaks, Y, indicates the density of the plasma. The value of the X indicates the wavelength. The room was perfectly dark and the sole light emitted was the one from the ECAT SK. The video screens of the spectrometer and the oscilloscope were oriented in a way not to project photons toward the spectrometer, while all the windows were shielded by black curtains. The spectrometer has been calibrated by an engineer of our team specialized in this matter. View number five is in the lower middle area. Here is the ECAT SK working out of the blue body. The light is very intense and it is not possible to look at it without eye protection with special glasses DIN grade 14. If the screen of your computer is 16 inches, then the plasma that you are seeing now is in its real dimensions. The reactor is a cylinder with 4 inches of height and 4 inches of diameter, and it is made with a material invented by Dr. Rossi. 
and is custom made. When all the heat is not removed by a fluid, the reactor is cooled with argon that is recycled by the control panel. My friend Andrea Rossi calls this a ballerina. He calls this a ballerina, and he says that he fell in love with this ballerina. But I think his focus on his job is making strange effects on him. View number six is all the way on the right in the middle. This is the measurement gauge of the micro sievert per hour. It detects ionizing radiations. The value during the test ranged from 0 0.06 to 0 0.12 microsievert per hour. These values are well below the limits of danger. They are about 1,000 times below the limit of danger, which is in the order of millisievert per hour while we are in the range of microsievert per hour. View number seven is in the lower right corner of the screen. This is a scale to check that the block of the ECAT SK did not change weight. This is the Teslometer to measure if there are magnetic fields generated from the ECAT, which would imply the direct production of electricity. The number 3.4 that you can see is in millitesla. This ECAT SK heats the room where it has been installed. In this photo, you see the monitor of the thermometers that measure the following. In channel room is the room temperature. In channel one is the temperature at the radiator that recovers the heat dissipated by the control panel. In channel 8 is the temperature of the air in the heat exchanger of the reactor. We are showing all this to you for your curiosity. When the ECAT SK is installed in a factory, you won't see the plasma, and you won't need an oscilloscope or a spectrometer. The ECAT SK is in the nice box that we have here. It gets installed in your factory and it provides heat. You simply pay for the heat you use. It is a well-made economical heating system. It is an exciting new technology and it does not put carbon into the atmosphere. But the most important fact is that it will save you money, and it is available now. Andrea Rossi will now go through some calculations about the operation of the ECAT.
Okay. First of all, uh, please, Thomas, uh, uh, show me the enlargement uh, that uh, the section enlarged on the uh, spectrometer that uh, we have prepared. Okay. This uh, particular will be of interest uh, mainly for the uh, scientists, uh, if any, that uh, are listening to us. Uh, the, the, in, uh, in this uh, the section of the spectrometer that uh, here has been enlarged, uh, we have a signature at uh, 437.2 nanometers. is important because it is a possible indication of the existence of uh, pycometric aggregates whose high density uh, I think is at the origin of the energy gain and uh, should be this, uh, this, this thing that uh, uh, turns up the, 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 the reactions of the effect. Who wants to go to to, to go deeper in the theoreticals, can Google for my paper ICAT-SK and Long Range Particle Interactions, published on ResearchGate on January 24, 19, uh, several days ago. Uh, or more easy, just email to me uh, at uh, info at leonardo.com 1996.com and I will send you the link. This uh, said, let us go to the board that I have prepared for the, uh, for the calculations of the rating. Let's go there. <coughs> yes. Now, what uh, here uh, is a uh, is uh, here are numbers just put in, in a scratch uh, paper uh, for, for who is interested uh, to, to see how uh, we have determined the power of uh, the module of the ICAT. Um, I will be fast because, uh, again, this will not be of very much interest to our clients because they are interested to how much heat they, they are receiving. But, uh, but can be interesting for um, a more, a more uh, scientific presentation uh, in, in a certain limit, within a certain limits. Then along the Vienna equation to calculate the temperature of the, of the plasma, uh, uh, we, uh, we have Tk equals uh, 2900 divided by lambda, where Tk, D with T, P with K is the temperature in Kelvin. Lambda is the wavelength of the radiation that we have seen with the spectrometer. And uh, uh, 2900 is the Vn constant. Substituting in the equation N, we have that uh, uh, the temperature uh, will be 2900 divided by 0 0.3575, that is the wavelength that you have seen in the spectrometer, in the spectrometer's uh, graphic, where uh, in the spectrometer you have seen uh, 357, but uh, uh, that is in nanometers, while the equation of the N is in microns. So since one micron is 1,000 nanometers, we will have to write the 0 0.357. And uh, what uh, turns out uh, is that uh, the temperature of the plasma in that very limited part of the plasma you have seen, that is the hottest one, that is all the, the one that we will use to calculate the power, is 8,111 Kelvin. Just for your curiosity, it is equal to 8,384. Celsius degrees. And then we use this temperature that we have calculated to go to see through the Boltzmann equation how what is the power of the case. Please give me uh, more space under 
Yes. Uh, now we can see the equation number two was equal sigma time epsilon time t to the power power time s. Don't worry, it's very simple. Uh, sigma is 5.67 time 10 uh, to the minus 12 power. It would be to the minus 8 if we were calculating uh, square meters, but since we are calculating square centimeters, it becomes 10 to the minus 12, because one square centimeter is 10 to the minus 4 square meters. Epsilon is the emissivity that for the plasma uh, that is a black body should be 1, but we calculate 0 0.9, assuming the black body is not perfect. T to the fourth power is, uh, as we have seen, 8,111 to the fourth, which uh, totals 4.3 times 10 to the 15th power. S is the surface in square centimeters. And this, uh, the square that we consider is one square centimeter. Because the area that we have seen, that is the area around the cathode, uh, is 1.1 centimeter long and has a diameter of 0 0.3 um, uh, centimeters. <laughs> Substituting in equation 2, we will get the towards equal um, 5.667 times 0 0.9 times 4.3 times 10 to the 15th power times 10 to the minus 12 power, power times 1, which, uh, believe me, totals 21,942 watts, which is 21.9 kilowatt of power, which means that we make an energy equal to 21.9 kilowatt hour per hour. And uh, now we go to see the energy consumed by the system. Uh, so later we will be able to calculate the coefficient of power. We will calculate uh, we will see now the first with and we call it E1. It is the energy consumed by the control panel. This is the total energy that comes from the out the plug of the outlet uh, of the grid. And uh, as we have seen uh, during the video, we have a 380 watt hour per hour of energy consumed. This is the very total that goes to the cooling system, to the cut, and whatever else. And uh, this energy uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, the energy that is not consumed by the cat that we will see later, is completely recovered uh, with the heat exchanger. Uh, and then so the, also the, the heat dissipated by the control panel is recovered with the COP 0 0.9. Then we see E2 is the energy consumed by the ECAT, which means the energy that actually enters in the ECAT. As we have seen in the video, we have a voltage of 0 0.25 volts. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, See, there is, as you have seen in the oscilloscope, it is 5 millivolts times 5, which is 250 millivolts. That is equal to 0 0.25 volts. We have seen that, uh, that the resistance along the cable that uh, supplies the energy to the cat is uh, 78 ohms. And uh, probably you remember on the old Okay, we will be able to see again because this video will remain on YouTube and on Vimeo. Uh, the, uh, and uh, you can see the photo of the ometer that indicates a 78.1 Jessel and we approximate to 78. Uh, the amps along with the equation of Ohm is uh, amps uh, is a force divided, uh, uh, divided by resistance. So M sequence substituting 0 0.25 divided by 78, which is 0 0.0032. When we make the calculation of watts along the equation, 
the roads are 0 0.25 times 0 0.0032, which means 0 0.0008 watts hour per hour that are consumed by the cat. Now, we will consider the COP in considering both the scenarios. Can you give me, please, Thomas, also below? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Go down, please go down. Go down, down. Okay, stop. Uh, okay, as you can see uh, in the last line of uh, the paper above, the COP considering both the energy that uh, is consumed by the cooling system plus the energy that uh, is uh, consumed by the ICAT, we have 21.942 divided by the, the 20, <coughs> sorry, 21,942 watts produced divided by 300 watt hour per hour consumed. We have a COP of 57. Again, 21,942 watt hour per hour produced divided 380 watt hour per hour consumed. We make this division and the result is that we have a coefficient of performance of 57. But allow me to make you observe that all the 380 watts are recovered at the COP 0.9 from the radiator of the control panel. And if we consider the, only the energy consumed by the ICAT, we have 21,942 watt hour per hour produced divided for 0 0.0008 watt hour per hour consumed. This means self-sustaining mode. Now, please give me the board below calorimetric comparison. Uh, please go. Stop. Stop. Down a little bit. Down. Okay. Now we can see. Uh, um, I, now I give you an approximate calculation of uh, the calorimetry that more or less matches with uh, the uh, with the precise calculations made with uh, the Boltzmann equation and the Boltzmann equation. We have uh, heated. We are heating a room of a factory that has a surface of about 3,000 square feet, which is about 300 square meter, and is high about 4 meters, which is about uh, something less than 14 feet. That the outside is uh, about... Uh, I, I reported the calculation that I made in the moment I was there, so are not exactly the same data you have seen in the video, but more or less we are close because the chamber outside is, is different. The chamber outside uh, was 0 Celsius, which is about 32 Fahrenheit. The room temperature was about 16 Celsius, which is about 61 Fahrenheit. And the two of them, with this resort, with normal heaters, uh, you need about between 20 and 22 kilowatt of rating. Uh, so you need a boiler of 20, 22 kilowatt of power uh, to, to heat up at these conditions with these results. My mathematical detail is the fan is 5,500 no, um, effective uh, uh, cubic meters per hour, which uh, sum up to 6,700 kilograms. We have a delta D of 16 Celsius. The, Specific heat of air is 0 0.17 more or less. Go up, please. No, 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 down, 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 down. Okay, the power is uh, uh, 6,700 times 0 0.17 times 16 and makes about 20.5 uh, kilowatt of power, or if you prefer, 20.5 kilowatt hour per hour of energy. Uh, we also made a test with an airflow of 330 effect effective cubic meter per hour. Can you go up, please? Uh, up, up, a little bit again. Stop. Uh, thank you. Uh, 
and uh, uh, obtaining a delta t of 312 Celsius, you may use the same equation, and you again will arrive to a power of about 21 kilowatt hour per hour. Uh, a power of 21 kilowatt uh, uh, that gives 21 kilowatt hour per hour. And uh, uh, now to, towards about the heat that is dissipated by the cooling system, it is recovered because, as you have seen, we get uh, from a fan of 250 effective per cubic meter per hour we, we get, uh, using the same equation, about 300 watts. We are consuming 380. So the COP is, uh, it is not a 09 as written there. That is a mistake, but it is a 0 0.7, 0 0.8. And uh, that's it. Uh, this, uh, about the calculation, again, these are calculations made by me and uh, not by a third party, but these are the numbers that we guarantee to our customers. And uh, at this point, uh, with great uh, pleasure, uh, first because I can raise my voice, and second because he is great, my friend Frank Ackland of Eckert World will direct the discussion that uh, will follow up from now on. And, uh, and so, uh, you. Okay. So I think we're going to set up for Frank here. Uh, we will um, mention once again that the most important thing that we will tell you today is this. That the ECAT SK is available now for industrial applications. If your business requires safe, reliable, competitively priced heat, we encourage you to contact us.